the seagulls. Follow Chora. It's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Talking nonsense, so I thought, no, no, enough's enough. Why should I put up with that? Talking nonsense, so I thought, no, no, enough's enough. Why should I put up with that? Yes, good evening. Hope you can all hear me okay. The heart's racing a wee bit still. Wow, what a night we have just had. The Boise bus is lively tonight. It's it's bouncing. There's a lot of there's a lot of cheers. There's a lot of um celebration going on. There's a lot of relief in the air as well, guys. I don't know how you all feel, but that was. Oh, oh, wow. Anyway, apparently the news at 10's finished, so we can get down to some real chat. We can get down to some real chat about the football, maybe a bit of charisma and uh, a lot less scripted bollocks, you know what I mean? Let's have it. Uh, brilliant to see how many people are watching live already. Again, as always, I'll always open the show saying thank you to all those who are watching. Um, and yes, this is a velvet, 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 did the you think? Velvet, you can't even write it. Hopefully, you can all hear me okay. It's very difficult when you're on your own and you kind of fear the worst. Um, there's comments flying in already. Connor, I think, let's just start with a comment from the group because I think it's the best way. Sometimes it's great to have your scripts and your schedules and make out you've, you know, you're Trevor McDonald, you know what I mean? But I'm not Trevor McDonald and I'm just a supporter like you guys. Uh, who happens to be good at talking shite. And Connor comes straight in and hits the spot, as how I feel. His nerves are sh absolutely shot to bits. Tony Ralston now deserves every bit of praise coming his way after the criticism he took for so long. He's got balls of steel with the big lad. Well, that net needed to have nets of steel to stop that header going in. I tell you what, the desire... Stephen Presser, I sound like now, you know? Desire, but that is what it was. With that, Ralston just wants it, he gets it. And I have said this, I have said this from for a long time, in my opinion, anyway. And I'm not trying to be Nostradamus, I just think it's a fact with football you can't just have brilliant technicians. Sometimes you need to have guys who get it. I'll give you a brilliant case in point. And it was highlighted recently on uh, Twitter this week when we signed Barry Robson, for example, right? In the 0708 campaign, he just turned, or he was about to turn 30. And he was nowhere near as good a technician as Massimo Donati, for example. But there's no way you trusted Donati to win that league more than you trusted Robson. Tonight, I'll be honest, and this is a point we can all discuss, of course, is I thought Ralston... Ralston's ahead of Juranovic for me now is the right back at, the, at this moment in time. Um, oh, what an impact. What a goal. What a feeling this is. That is how league titles, sometimes three points. I kept going on on Monday about 
three points, three points. That's all that matters. I don't care how we do it. Sometimes matches are more than three points. Tonight was more than three points. Tonight was a result that we may, and fingers crossed, look back on at the end of the season as going, remember that night in Dingwall when Ralston scored in the 95th minute? Remember that night? That's the night that got us there. That's the night that's triggered something. I, I think the opposition across the city know now, if they didn't before, that we are fighting for this title. And by God, what a feeling. What a feeling. Brilliant to see so many folk in, as I always say, and I'm going to get as many comments up as we possibly can. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll try and cover as many points that I might have tried to scuttle together before we went live. But you know what it's like. It's just a nightmare sometimes. We'll start, we'll start with the first half. And by the way, anyone who's tuning in tonight who's expecting me to be playing championship manager, the good news is I'm going to do that on Friday night now. So there we go. I'm going to open goal tomorrow night. Uh, so I can't do it tomorrow night. But Friday night, we'll pick up the championship manager 2001-2002 season. I think tonight it's important that we do at least half an hour just talking, getting as many points of view as possible about what was Ah, oh, more than three points. That's the way I want to describe it tonight. Let's go back to the first half and how we got the goal. Now, Abada played up top. Me and my brother had spoke on the... Uh, we had spoke on the Double Down show. Or Double Down, I should say. Get my pronunciation right. We'd spoke about... Um, basically, is Abada going to be the guy that we go to to play up front? Look how he finished that, that opportunity he was given the first half. It was natural. He's only just turned 20 years old. I can't help but wonder if there's a future for Leo Abada playing as a centre forward. I'm beginning to think that might actually be uh, the way forward for him. And do you know what? I'm kind of all for it. However... The banner I've put up there is obviously about tailoring scales. And that was another debate that we had in the Double Down show. We debated it on the Monday Club as well. One of the viewers brought it, brought it up on Monday night and they wanted to discuss where do you sit with scales or uh, scales or Greg Taylor? Now, to me, it was the right decision. I did say it would be my preference if scales played tonight. He did. He gets another assist. Um... Oh, I just thought there was a bit of quality with the assist. There was a bit of composure. It was the perfect ball uh, for Abada. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted with that. Uh, that, though, should have been a goal in normal circumstances that lead us on to a fantastic away win. Now, what actually happened was through a lack of options, I think, up top, and there is, I just think we struggled a wee bit to convert as many chances as we can. I also have to say, I felt the delivery at times tonight was, it was off it, wasn't it? If I've been, you know, we don't want to get critical, it's a brilliant man. But we've got to, when we have first halves, like Al, you know, I've got a comment here coming in from P. McGinley, another brilliant contributor to the show. Brilliant to have you with us again. He says we were comfortable in the first half. We were never troubled. We didn't make many great chances. We controlled the pace of the game well. Well, I actually think we got the ball into the areas that Ange Postacoglu is determined for us to get the ball. It's the delivery at times. And Juranovic, I felt, was wasteful at times with his, uh, his crossing. Even the second half, there was at one point he did a wee sand wedge into the box, you know, it was just lofted in there. We've not got the players to deal. I think he thinks at times Jakimakis is playing every week, you know? And Jakimakis is very rarely featured in the Celtic team. We don't have the players for these wishy-washy, floaty balls that are full of nonsense. Um, so, I I look at Liam Scales' ball. It was done with composure, control. It was very deliberate and it went straight to his man and a bad I couldn't miss. It was on on a plate, we needed that big style. I thought we'd kick on from there. However, 
bigger picture. When you watch it as a Celtic fan, I think we'd all admit you watch it and you think, right, we're gonna we're gonna push on from there. Take into the bigger equation and it, you know, the grand scheme of things, as they would say, and go, do you know what? No wonder there's chances getting wasted. No wonder we're not doubling down, if you like, on uh, on leads that we have. It's because the you know the, the options just aren't there right now for Ange. I do think the final delivery could be a hell of a lot better. More comments coming in. Love all this. And this is what, you know, the Boise bus is going to be all about. As I say, the plan was to do a championship manager stream tonight. I think we'll park it, if that's all right, we use, and we'll come back Friday. I don't think it's as popular anyway. It's a wee bit of fun. Now, Kevin comes in with a completely different standpoint to mine. Now, this is what it's all about, again, without trying to, you know, re-emphasise it's an open debate and all that bullshit. The thing is, I do disagree with what Kevin's saying, but I'm always up for the debate. Now, he says it's a great ball from Scales, but he prefers Taylor when we don't have the ball. But Scales can adapt and improve, plus he has the height. I don't think it's all about height with Scales, if I'm completely honest with you, Kevin. For me, Scales looks far more Celtic first team ready than he's been given credit for so far. There's a couple of mitigating factors in that. Was he an Ange Postacoglu signing? Does it, if you're not an Ange Postacoglu signing, take you longer to get integrated into the team? Because he needs convinced. But everything I've seen so far from Scales, and your eyes don't lie, you know, f fuck all your stats, all that bullshit. You know, sometimes that gets all... It kind of clouds what you're actually watching as a football supporter. And you're a fan and you're watching. I'm going, Greg Taylor at the weekend, compared to what I've seen from Liam Scales, again tonight, right now, it's Liam Scales is my first choice at left back. End of story. Um, more comments coming in. I, I like this one from Marco Bryan. Brilliant to have you with us, by the way, mate. As always, magic. You love Craigan's pain at the end. Going crazy at everyone in the park. I swear to God, I went for a piss earlier, right? And Craig was standing in my bathroom. I'm like, he's just everywhere. Everywhere you look. Stephen Craigan's voice is in your, he's in your ear. He's, he's your shadow. Just fuck off, mate. Nick take care of Stephen Craigan. He was an absolute hammer thrower of a player, whatever the saying is. You know what I mean? He was nonsense. So I don't know how, no idea how. He gets every single gig under the sun. Even Ross County TV, they find Cragen. It's embarrassing. Although I did find it funny because I thought the lead commentator tonight sounded quite excited when Celtic got the winner. No offence, Ross County, but you might want to look into that. In comes Jay Lee. Now, we're not going to try and talk too negatively tonight because at the end of the day, I'll go back to what I said on Monday. All this is about now this month because of the injury list we've got, because of the restrictions on the team, it's about getting three fucking points every game we possibly can. We did that tonight. Okay, it was late in the day. But the point is valid that Jay Lee brings out. Montgomery, further forward, we were told was going to be more effective than what he was at left back. And I actually thought he did all right at left back in the early phases of the season. Um, I didn't think he had much of an impact in the game tonight at all. However, the guy's 20. That's going to happen. Juranovic's crossing was woeful. I've got to agree with that. And it's not just first half. It's not just first half. It's the honest truth that Juranovic's delivery is going to need to be worked on because I just feel, I just feel with Juranovic, he's came with the pedigree. Ralston's not got that, could, that, that credit in the bank, shall we say, of eight to ten caps for Croatia, involved at Euro 2020, a two and a half million transfer fee. He's not got that, and yet, I feel that, ah, I'm not trying to be biased to Ralston because I've got no reason to be biased to him and, uh, apart from the displays this season, really. I mean, if he'd left in the summer, I wouldn't have blinked. I don't know about you guys, but none of us would have bothered that much. Um, but he's came in, and for me, if uh, right now, you're looking at, your, your preferred back four, then I, I think at right back, we've got everyone fit in that squad. Right back, 
It's Tony Ralston's jersey right now. And Juranovic either fits in at left back or Liam Scales takes it off him. Um, but these are great debates. Great debates to have because this is the thing. Whilst we've been very short of options, and we have been, we've been short of options, guys, up in the in the final third. No, make no mistake about it. See at the back, though, he's got a fair roster to pick from right now. Albeit Julien, a £7 million sign, isn't available. He's not been available for a year. He's not ever been an option since Ange took over. Other than him, we've got a lot of players available. Um, Jay Lee comes back in. And I'll just bring up, because obviously Jay's trying to be balanced, and I like that. He says, we know Juranovic is better than what he produced tonight. How do we know that, though, yet? I think he, he, he's got, a lot of it's based on his pedigree and his previous clubs, career, caps, etc. But in a Celtic shot so far, you've got to go on merit. I feel that Ralston's ahead of him this season. Just my opinion. And as I say, I'll always bring up as many different opinions as possible because the Boise bus is, is the place where you pass about, you know, the hot toenails of a bottle of Buckfast to each other, you know? Because you're mates. You have the rest of that, mate. Hey, you finish that. I like all that stuff. But Ralston coming on, he gets another goal. I don't know what he's up to. Is that him up to six goals this season? Some of them have been worldies. Tonight was about wanting it more than anyone else in that box. And we are going to need that drive this season. Because this league campaign, in my eyes, potentially goes to the wire. I think it could potentially go to the wire. I don't think they're going to... They're picking up points left, right and centre, by the way. But ignorant not to acknowledge that. It's pointless not acknowledging that. Their new managers came in and actually think it's brought a lot more calm than what there was when Slippy was there. However, I feel Celtic's clean sheet record of late, I say of late, it's maybe a couple of months now, consistent clean sheets, and with the, the hurdles that they faced tonight, it's fantastic to see a side with a guy like Ralston in there who just gets it. It's such a simpleton term, and I wish I was one of these analysis with a pen in my hand that could give you better content than that and, and explain it better but I just think it is about getting it and I'm delighted for him first and foremost and I'm delighted that we got the three points no matter how long it took we got the job done we stay in touch and now it's us in a cup final not the you know not the team that's the flavor of the month or you know meant to be the top of the pile or the, you know, the cream at the top of the cake, whatever the sayings are. Is Celtic this in, the, in a cup final? Is Celtic that's got the opportunity again to start lifting trophies, lay down a marker, as they say. How exciting is that on the back of a win, not a draw? Jay Lewis comes back in. I'm, I'm not being biased, by the way, to the contributors. I don't know Jay for Adam. He says five goals it is for Tony Ralston. Bear in mind, Danny McGrain only scored nine in 15 seasons. We're not going to compare him to McGrain. However, that's an outstanding uh, comparison. Uh, absolutely delighted with that. So, when we look over as well at the rest of the game, there's other aspects to discuss as well. And I want to bring this up. And I know I've touched on it already. But wasted chances seems to often get flung at the fact that well, Jack Amakis is at a stop start beginning to his Celtic career. Kyoko isn't maybe a number nine naturally, although it's, that's his preferred position for me. And then literally, Ajeti, I mean, we've seen him close down a goalkeeper and he pulls up straight away because it's the first time he's maybe done it in his life. Um, I actually thought the service tonight didn't match the players that you have. See, when Abada scored and you watched him celebrating with his teammates, you realised, I thought he was a lot taller than that. This guy is not going to thrive on floaty, wishy-washy crosses into the box. We have to think differently, and Liam Scales did tonight, which I think helps. But over the course of the season, and I do want to touch on this because we've been here before. We have been here before. We have lost the league. 
2003 on goal difference. Fucking goal difference. Don't let them back in when we were miles clearing the goal scoring charts, miles clearing the goal difference charts, even if you like, uh, at the beginning of the season when we were more probably erratic in terms of performances then. But we built up a huge goal difference advantage. And I just feel right now, yes, there's wasted chances. And I understand that there's not a recognised forward in the line. Totally get that aspect. But the service we are delivering could be better. What do you think of that? I think it could be better. Um, and I expect a wee bit more from guys like Juranovic. I know 2.6 million in the modern days. Oh, God. Right, we get that. However, I think we've got to recognise that. We've got to be, we've got to base a strategy with the team that revolves around whoever it is up top, whether it be a badder, Turnbull at the weekend, whoever. The ball's in the box, so the way we get opportunities created has to adapt all the time. You know, I, I'll go back to that sandwich that, that Juranovic did second half at 1-1. I mean, he's literally just dug his foot under the ball. He's put it about 40 yards in the air. I'm like, who's winning that in our team? Absolutely no one. However, and I like this with Martin Kelly coming in. Try to bring up your comment here, mate. There we go. When we have everyone at the races, we will be frightening. Well, why not? Why shouldn't we be frightening, Martin? I think everyone at the races is one thing. I think we're going to add a minimum of three horses to that race come January, which is only a few weeks away. I said on Twitter tonight, one of my posts, I mean, I'm not I'm not articulate like other people are. I don't pretend to be. But I'm like, just muddle your way through. Muddle your way through. Grind your way through. Stumble your way through this month with a shit show we We've got the front and centre, the selection issues, the unfit players when we get in risk, the lack of forward line being as prominent as what we'd like it to be. Let's just get through this month. And then, yeah, you're absolutely right, Martin. We then bring that full roster in. And, wow, this team could go. I think this team could go. Add a few newbies in. And, by the way, we trust Ange Postecoglou's judgment on it massively for me. Um, what other positives do we want to talk about from tonight, though? Because I felt... Does, I like that for Ryan Hall. Does Ralston have 10 siblings get them signed? That desire thing is huge. The attitude aspect, I think you're meaning. And I get that. You also need technicians in the park. I was a wee bit surprised Rogic didn't start. There'll be many reasons for that. That Angel know that I don't. All for it. That's fine. His judgment call... I'm not going to judge that. It's absolutely for Ange to make that decision. Um, but you bring back the likes of Jota, Kyoko, you know, James Forrest fully fit. Imagine that guy that's got, what, 100 goals, 98 assists or something like that for Celtic, you know, and he's been missing in action now for 12 to 14 months. And we'll, we will get better with all these guys back in and hopefully reinforcements come January. Billy boy, we are the walking wounded. Agreed. People are getting their first starts over the past couple of weeks and we are still winning. I know you didn't say still there, Billy boy, but I think you meant we are still winning. Because the run we're on right now, I think, and again, I'm not Opta. Don't call me Opta boys. <laughs> I'll never catch on. But we must be something like 14 league games now unbeaten. I'm all for that. Um, and there's another positive that John Duncan brings in. The team is hot, and I don't just mean the keeper. He fucks up, right? He does a terrible save when the ball's came kind of straight at him. His... I'm going to sound like Stephen Presley again. I'm even copying his hairdo these days. His desire to make sure that second ball was won by him. Outstanding. And well done, El you know... <laughs> Joe Hart, I was going to call him Elvis there, I'm talking about myself now. Joe Hart, for the second time in a couple of weeks, obviously we've seen an example of it at Leverkusen. This guy's willing to put his head on the line. He's willing to take the injuries to keep that ball out the net. 
again, it's a fantastic characteristic Celtic require right now to win this title. This month is all going to be about different things than pretty football. I know we say trust the process, etc. For me, with the tools and just got, you see Montgomery, you know, left wing tonight, for example. No offence to him, but it's just not your first pick left winger. You are looking at a situation where fuck the process. Don't trust the process. The process. Just get there. Get the job done. Obviously, we try and implement all the styles that you're training on every week. You've got to do all that. Every match, I get all that. Come the 95th minute, just get someone like Ralston when you're in a sticky situation who can stick their nut in the ball. The beauty of this is, of course, key players like Kyoko never came on tonight and we still got the result. Does that mean he's going to be free for the, the League Cup final? Maybe he'll be rested even for that and we focus on the Glasgow derby. I'm not entirely sure. Alan Robertson comes in. And I'm glad you noticed this, mate. Near beat on. Right. That is, to me, the definition of square balls. He's a square ball passer. Keeps, retains possession brilliantly, apparently. And he brings calmness and all that bullshit. He was getting the ball and wanting to take it for two yards forward. Every time he got it, particularly the first half. And his passes were always with... And iron what was in front of him, not beside him. I thought it was really encouraging. And if that is yet another example of what Ange Postecoglou effect can have on players, then it should be quite exciting to think what he's going to do, not just with youngsters coming through. You know, I know Montgomery didn't have his best day at the office, but it's a work in progress. You trust the guy who is managing that work in progress. But with a guy like Beaton, who's approaching 30 years old, Approaching a testimonial year at Celtic, bizarrely. The difference in him tonight, I just felt he took responsibility. And that was really, really good to see. Uh, and these are the sort of signs I want. I want Celtic players to take responsibility in these situations. And I felt tonight, guys like Beaton wanted to take responsibility, which I would probably have accused them not of doing as much in his prior Celtic career. We are pushing 100 watching live. It's brilliant, eh? This is great. This is what the Boise bus is all about, by the way. And thank you to every single one of you watching. And I will try and include as many comments as possible because I think that's what keeps the show flowing. In the meantime, though, cheers to you all. Graham Bell, what a result. Couldn't care less about the performance. Absolutely brilliant. He's now buzzing for the final. And Ange and in Ralston, we trust. I just think that's wonderful rhetoric, Graham. And I think that reflects how a lot of fans feel right now. Ange Postecoglou got a buy-in that he has said himself he felt wasn't quite warranted for what he'd achieved so far. Fair enough. I kind of actually agree with him on that. But it's a brilliant thing that there is such a buy-in. It's a healthy thing. It allows a positive vibe to be created throughout the throughout the club. Obviously, we know about the bold and fan issues. We've discussed that enough. I don't want to go back into that shit tonight. But the players are playing for the manager right now. The players are undoubtedly improving massively under the manager right now. That's huge. More comments coming in. Okay, Paul McFarlane, this team has shown something different from last season, and that's not given up to the final whistle. And now, I think this is a wonderful point, because the first training session, everyone knows the viral video that went round when Ange says, we'll be relentless to the final whistle. He said it on the training ground, and I thought, well, that to me is, that should be standard at Celtic. But, there seems to be an element of truth in that that was said then, eh? And you're seeing that tonight. That fight, that hunger, that desperation to get three points tonight, I felt definitely, Paul, wasn't there last year. Now, no fans is a big thing, but I just also think they're up for this. They're just up for it. We know we've hung in there, and I think everyone knows come January, 
or after January. This is going to be a different animal. It's going to be more, even more in the mind, or mould, I should say, of Ange Postecoglou. That's something to be excited about. Because what he's done right now is got the best out of a lot of square pegs and round holes. Or players we maybe never thought were first team qualities. He's, he's, he's utilised them to his absolute best. But he's going to get huge, huge signs of improvement once he's got more of his guys in. And you just hope they hit the ground running. We can't expect them all to, particularly if they're coming from the other side of the world. But you can't help but be a wee bit excited about it as well. Alfred comes in. Compare that result to what would have happened last season. And I think you're kind of agreeing with what I'm saying, Alfred. Sometimes you have to graft and fight for everything. I think sometimes it's as simplistic as that. You know, the SPL is not a league to win all the time through technical ability. Sometimes it just takes simplicity, simple things like rolling the sleeves up, getting down and dirty, just wanting to win that header more than anyone else. These things are so important to win a Scottish Premier League title. Donny Boy comes in, love it. He says, this is the magic bus. Who sang about all those? Who? Who? <laughs> yeah, no, mate, this is the magic bus. And what we're trying to do right now, if you let me self-indulge for a second, is fuck trying to kid on your you know, a party political broadcaster or you're somehow in the know or, you know, sometimes I think folk take all this a wee bit too seriously. And I'm not aiming that at anyone, by the way, I just think across the board. I've, I've took a lot of joy watching other podcasts. Like, I'll give it for example, I met Ryan 118 a month ago. I had it in my head. He, I wasn't going to like him. As soon as I met him, soundest guy ever. You watch his pods and he's not taking himself too seriously. And I think none of us should be. Let's debate the football. Let's debate the football. But at no point in time, try and kid on, we're in the know or we're, you know, you've got Peter Lowell's number messaging me right now. Oh, fuck all that bullshit. Let's just talk about what our eyes see. And I think that's so important. And what I've seen tonight was a team that is fighting, fighting for a league title. And we are still in there. I'm going to sound like Kevin Keegan now. <laughs> and I couldn't agree more with Kookaburra. Brilliant to have you with us, by the way. I've never seen your name um, in the stream before, Kookaburra, but I absolutely echo your sentiments. Ugly wins are just as valuable as classy wins. You're preaching the converted on that one, mate. I could not agree more. I think that is a huge part, a huge part of winning league titles in this country. And... I think there's a lot of happy Celtic fans doing a long travel down. Let's talk about the difference it makes having supporters so vocal the whole way through. Some songs might not be everyone's cup of tea. I get all that. To me, it's part of being Celtic supporters. It happens. I'm not there to judge. You know, that away support tonight, if you're telling me does not play a part in driving that team on, then I'm sorry, you don't understand how football works because sport in all kinds is built on a few things. Momentum is a huge thing. This invisible thing is momentum. Sometimes it comes from beyond what is happening on the, the pitch, the court, whatever you want to call it, whatever the sport is, it comes from beyond. And the Celtic fans tonight, you're telling me didn't play a huge part and driving that team on to get that late, late equaliser. And what is Ralston's reaction? He cannot wait to celebrate in front of them. He makes a beeline for them, and the emotions pouring out of him. He can't do that to a silent, a silent choir, you know? Monty, spot on. Let the people sing. Let the people sing. This is what we want. Absolutely. More comments. I want to, I want to try and get as many people involved. I don't want to hang you on all tonight what we'll do is as i say this is meant to be the championship manager night i get the fact that after a game more things are important you know um in comes p mcginley yes russell yes loves this format no script shooting the breeze all aboard mate see the day i started doing the old monday 
whatever you want to call it. I named it Monday Club, hence why it's called the Monday Club of my show, because that was all, you know, I, I came up with that, that 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 idea as a title, so I took that with me. But see, when I started doing Mondays and you start getting 10 bullet points sent to you before you went on, and three weeks in a row, they're about fucking Neil Lennon. I'm like, this is now angled, it's aimed, it's scripted. Who cares about that? I want to talk to I want to talk to you guys. I want to debate, and I and I'm happy by the way. See with all these sort of sides of arguments or debates that come up. I swear to God, I'm up for arguing with them. I'm up for debating them, and I'm always up for acknowledging them. And I think that is what's going to make the Boise Bus special. I really do think that. Ronnie Young comes in. Ronnie, top lad on the Twitter, always supports the channel, and I do appreciate it, Ronnie. Six months ago, he'd have chased anyone that wanted Ralston in the team. Holding both hands up this season, I was wrong. What a warrior. Now, Ronnie, I love the fact you've admitted that you were wrong on that one. Here's my hands up. I remember convinced I was Ange Postacoglu was the wrong appointment and was a, a panic appointment. Maybe the, maybe it was. Maybe it was a recommendation at the last minute. Maybe there's elements of that that's true. What I didn't expect was him to have the impact, not only on the team that he has so far, but on me. I have never went so full circle on someone in my life. In fact, I'm probably too stubborn to do that normally. You know, there's certain individuals in the world that I'll definitely not go full circle on. However, Poster Coglu, I am going full circle. And that's what it's all about. Um, Connor McLean comes in. Well, you say that, mate, but see when it's in your wee silly wee bullet points on a Monday morning. You're like, I need worries, mate, because you don't like them. That's what it basically was. They had a fallout. I'm getting told to talk about them all the time. Absolute nonsense. Nonsense. FA wouldn't he be chuffed to play your boy club. Ralston uh, must be peeing his pants nowadays with joy. Ralston's just living the dream though, isn't he? He's living the dream. And I think that's what it's, I think there's just a magic in that. The same way Kieran Tierney was. Kieran Tierney obviously was more of a polished article from a younger age, but Ralston's got that sort of working class almost thing about him where you go, you're a fan playing right now and playing out your skin and contributing a hell of a lot. In comes Anne Corrente. This is important, by the way. She's a great show. She's loving listening to me. You're the only one, Anne. But God bless from the USA. We are going global, guys, already. The Boise bus is crossing the Atlantic, going to the USA, picking up Anne. This is brilliant. And Celtic FC is the best club in the world. You're absolutely right. Now, Billy Boy comes back in. Interesting name. Who cares how Ange came? Thank fuck not Eddie Howe. I think there's a huge argument about that now. Eddie Howe, did he really have the metal to go to Ross County without his army of coaches around him? Ange is doing this on his own, remember? He's doing it on his own. You know, with the same coaches up there. I think Eddie Howe needed about, I don't know, Made Marion and you know, you know Robin Hood I'm thinking of made made Marion made it off oh, whatever it's called, all the merry men he did anyway, and you look at it, Post Coglu he's just going solo, a bit like me, and he's uh, he's going to place like Denmo and grinding out results with absolutely a skeleton squad, it is fantastic to watch. Right, okay. In comes RB, same initials as me. He watched the other pod tonight. It is the other pod. And felt that they were harsh, very harsh on Starfelt. I've got to be honest, I've not watched the other pod. Not my style. No interest. You know, who cares? Do what they want. Anyway. Starfelt, I don't, I was a bit harsh on on Twitter as well. Uh, I've seen a few arguments to counter what I've said. But for me, he's 26 years old. He's a Swedish international. The second he tries to link that arm, and he does try and link his arm with his forearm, it's the equivalent of pulling a jersey. You're on a booking, Carl. Whether the booking is genuine, whether other Ross County players could have been booked for less, all becomes irrelevant. At that moment in time, we're 1-1, the guy's getting by you, and you have undoubtedly cynically fouled him and given the referee 
a decision to make. Oh, Carl. I just think, if I'm honest, I think either being his bonnet about the elbow or shoulder, whatever it was that burst his nose, and I'm not convinced that his head was straight after that. In fact, I think he was so disappointed the referee had given a foul against him and a booking that it went to his it went to his uh, it went to his head. P. McGinley, I can't wait for Boise shoot interview in the years to come. Mate, the second I got a text message from the other guy saying, you know, we take, you know, defamation of the of, of, of our brand very seriously. Me and my owner or his investor, or whatever it is, second I got that text message, that's when I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no scripts anymore, son. I don't owe you anything. What are you gonna come and do is steal my dog. You've got nothing on me. Don't ever send me messages like that again. So as I've always said, any truth I want to tell about whatever I was before and where I am now will be on my terms. Certainly not because of texts like that. In fact, texts like that just inspire me to call them out even more. <laughs> However, we'll not go into that too much, but I like the odd dig. In fact, you know what? He's not got the metal to say anything anyway, so fuck him. Who cares? Right, let's get back. That's why I agree with Kevin. The second yellow definitely was a yellow. The, how he got to being in a second yellow position is a completely different debate. But once you're on the yellow, Kevin, that is the thing. I agree with you. Carl Starfelt should have the savvy to know better. He's got to know better. He's just got to. And oh, that's the disappointing bit. That's the disappointment. That could have been costly. Luckily, he's gonna get he's gonna get away with it. He's gonna get away with it. He's gonna get away with it. Uh right, who's coming up next? Who have we not spoke to? Daniel McSee. He's always up to nonsense, him. The news of the month troops. Katie Price, Charlie Adams, and Tav all sharing a cell this crimbo. Well, you know, as long as they're not having a party with cheese and cheese and wine, you know. Uh yeah, there we go. He was on shaky ground for the yellow. It was the first. Yeah, and I get that. But be annoyed at the first after the game, RB. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm annoyed. I'm really frustrated at the first yellow card that he got. I felt it was unjust. But once you're on it, you're 26 years old. You're a Sweden, Swedish international. I'm sounding like Chris Sutton here, but come on. You're better than that, Carl. You know what is coming. You can't afford to do that. There's too much at stake. And at that point, the game is 1-1. We're obviously, as we've said, a skeleton squad. Ugh, come on. I can't even believe this right now, by the way. 151 are watching live. I swear to you, cheers to every single one of you, by the way. Um, the news at 10 is clearly finished. And there's plenty of Celtic fans still wanting to chew the fat. I am all for that. This is interesting for Bruce. Kyogo or Jota will be back for the final. Ange is a poker player. I am convinced you're right on that. Okay? I am convinced that Ange right now is playing down. Not doubling down. Playing down these injuries. My hunch is that Kyogo... Will he be on the bench or will he start? He'll be one of the two. I guarantee it. And I just think there's going to be an image thing, right? Where the second, if Celtic win, and obviously there's still a hurdle to go through, but David Gray's the manager. You know, we're not climbing a big white ladder here. Uh, we should be able to beat Ibs. No two ways. They've got an interim manager. They're in a shite run of results, bar beating them, which, you know, who cares? Uh, I think... The sight, the sight you've got, or the vision you've got of Ange lifting a trophy. If we thought we've all backed him by now, it'll double down, and we will all be buying into something pretty special. Uh, if Ange Postecoglou is going to be a guy waving a trophy at this weekend, at this stage, compared to where we're at the start of the season, idiots like me judging, criticizing, if he's lifting a trophy. Before the end of 2021, they'll feel that heat. 
because they've only won one out the last was it ten? You know, despite being this apparently dominant side right now and miles clear of us, I'm struggling to see that if we win that trophy because that'll be our what? Who's good at maths? Thirteenth at the last sixteen or something like that. It's not bad, eh? In comes Alistair Broadford, another new name. Hey, Bradford, sorry. Brilliant to have you with us, Alistair. The Boise bus is running late tonight. It's better late than never. Just ask Ralston. You're absolutely right. This is the 95th minute. Boise bus, you are spot on, my man. In comes Jay Lee again, Russell. If you've played the game, you know that at times you have to take gambles. What were Starfelt's options? Does he let the guy run right past him and set up a second? Well, firstly, he's caught out of position. Only ask, you know, I'm not expecting to have Paolo Maldini's standards, but the second thing you need to make a tackle, it's because you've made a mistake. Starfelt was, in my opinion, his head was gone, Jay Lee. That's the problem I've got. And when he made that desperation sort of grapple with the arm, he should not have been surprised to see a yellow card. The first ones may well have been surprised at, and I get all that. But once you're on the booking, you have to box cleverer. You have to trust your teammates, firstly, and you shouldn't be skinned in the first place. But I thought that's when John's the player and his name's escaping me. Someone will come in. This is what the bus is all about. Someone shout from behind me. The, there was a Ross County player that I thought caused Starfield danger all night, if I'm completely honest here. But I cannot think of what his name is. Well, I agree with this fender. I'm on the cells, couldn't see a goal coming. Ralston, legend, great stream, Boise boy. I agree with all that. Especially great stream, but kidding. Oh, just shine up a wee award for you as all, by the way. Um, no, no, no. I think the result tonight, the air of relief, the confidence it's going to give us as well, the momentum swing. I always talk about a pendulum, and we've let the pendulums kind of half swing over their way. They're buying into it. They're biting, though, too much. I think the other side of the city think they're miles, miles ahead of us. They ain't. Believe me, they ain't. And I think tonight, we just showed we're up for the fight. The sleeves are rolled up. The gloves were off. And Tony Ralston came good. Tony Ralston's a guy of ridicule, probably, to other teams. He's chipping in, and it is brilliant to see. In comes Stevie Boy. The manager said in his first training session, we don't stop. The other teams want to stop. Let them. We go to the final second. Up the Ralston. I see what you did there. Just testing the mic here. Do, 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 do. Hey, 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 Stevie. I couldn't agree more. Those words are going to look, they're going to look quite prophetic. You know, the more times that we do stuff like that. So I think that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I look forward to more examples of Ange Postacoglu's theories coming to life. I don't think it's just all about going to the last minute. I think it's about dominating the ball. It's having... The, he just needs the more of options back because I'm in no doubt once he's got more of these options back, we're going to be... We're going to be looking awfully clever, I think. You know, what he's doing right now and a result like that is just getting it on. Oh, there's a Rangers fan came in. Oh, no, I love this. I love this. A pitch. Oh, my God. Welcome to the bus, mate. First blue nose. I mean, my best mate, some Rangers fans, by the way. So don't worry, I'm not going to pick on you for that. But I will pick on you for your point. Pitch invasion beating Ross County. Have you ever seen the... Um, or were you at the Petro Cup, Petro Fat Cup final? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Matt. You're better than that, mate. I'll, I'll, my inner Sutton will come back out. You're better than that, Matt. Honestly, just take it easy. Pitch invasion beating Ross County. I'm sure you're about 10 points behind us and you beat Park Thistle about four years ago under Kashinya and there was a pitch invasion. You were never winning that league, son. We might win this league. That's the difference. You've won one in 10. But Matt, welcome and I hope you come back in because I'm actually not against, I'm not as against Rangers fans joining. I've always liked to think I've been a wee bit balanced over the, the year or so I've been doing this podcasting game, you know. Uh, but I'll call you out when you need called out if you are from the other side of the city. In comes Paul McFarlane. He says, the Boise bus is the place to be for honest chat, constructive criticism of all things Celtic. 
I'll send you that tenor the night, Paul. Thank you for that, mate. And as always, best wishes to you and the family, mate. You know what I'm talking about, all right? Uh, this is interesting. Douglas Hughes, Ange needs to get them in for some shooting practice, by the way. Well, I think we kind of were touching on this earlier, Douglas. I don't know if you were, you were in the show earlier, but I totally get where you're coming from. But right now, we've not got a recognised striker on the park either. You say this to a guy who knows nothing about Celtic, Scottish football, and you go, we play a game in the Highlands in front of 7,000 people. It's probably zero degrees, and we do it with no recognised forwards, and guess what? We miss chances. It's par for the course. It's par for the course. I mean, I don't want to give all this stuff too much airtime, uh, Fender. Oh, the comments are flying in, by the way. I can't keep up with them all. This is mad. Thank you for everyone who's commenting. Chris Moore, there's a better comment. Let's not talk about why I'm off the last pod. I think it was Fender who came in with that, mate. Shit happens, you fall out of people. I probably don't like him now. He's like me. I couldn't give him monkeys. Nice Adidas track though. This is velvet, guys. Or velour, as they say. Pretty unusual for an Adidas zippy, but yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely not, Paul. And I'm certainly not here to milk uh, the departure of that. But no, absolutely. I never did work for them. It's zero... Zero pence contracts, I'm afraid, at Axon, so you never actually do work for them. Uh, you just get milked. That's what happens. They want you to do every single show to make other people money. Fuck that. Uh, right, who's next? Right, I love it. Ronnie Pickering. What a winner that was, boy. Say, league winning performance tonight up the tick. I don't think Ronnie is miles off the money here. I don't think he's miles off the money. That's the type of game. I'm not saying we'll win the league, but what I will say is it's the type of game you look back on if you do win the league and say, that was huge. So, Ronnie, I'm all with you there. Jake Lennox, brilliant to have a new name on the show. Love your avatar. That's a beautiful J. You're a Ned. <laughs> he can't even be talking about me. A Ned. Well, Jake, I'm delighted you've joined the show anyway, mate. Hit the subscribe button if you want. In fact, for anyone who's not hit subscribe, go and do it as a wee favour for me. It costs you F all. I'm not wanting to push it that much. It's not really my style. Uh, oh, this is turning into a... Why did you leave the last pod night, Scott and the Brave? I was good on that. Well, I think so. Do you know what? We did all right for him. You know, just because he says something, it doesn't mean it's true. You know, I think... I wanted a team night out. That's what I was guilty of. That's all I ever... I never asked them for a penny. I did ask for a team night out a, a lot of times. And um, I felt it was a failure to recognise the, contrib the cont contribution of his team that, you know, won him two shiny trophies that he's quite quick to do snidey replies on Twitter to, to people. Well, I think these trophies disagree with that. See, when I started seeing stuff like that, I thought, you know what? You're a fanny. Dad, yeah, I mean, honestly, I'll get sued for what, mate? You know what I mean? It's embarrassing reading texts like that. It is embarrassing. And I hope someone feeds us all back to him. Because what's he going to do? Come around to my house and give me a paper cut. You know what I mean? He knows where I live. <laughs> I, I, I I cherish the thought. Boyce is on form, says Feed the Bear. These things tend to help, by the way. I'm right in the zone tonight. But you know what? There's 215 people watching Feed the Bear. My record since the Boyce bus started live was 80, so we're nearly trebling down, so I'm absolutely buzzing with that, to be fair, um, everyone's loving the bus, and this is what it's all about, so if enough of that, and I agree with that, by the way, it's almost an upwards on the, uh, the Axum, you know, the Axum, Jesus, the Axum bus, <laughs> imagine if this was a spin-off, and nobody knew, no, I think you're absolutely right. I think people want to know answers to questions or so if it's juicy gossip. And you can't blame them because the thing is with a lot of these viewers, so if just to counter it slightly is, they've put a huge investment of time into another podcast, right? And that means they've made investments in the people that are contributing on it. 
Hence why I'm so lucky to have so many on tonight. And I don't blame them for asking questions, to be honest. I'd be fucking... I'd be asking the questions too. Uh, you see... <laughs> Oh, Liam Riley, how did you know, mate? Aye. Aye, a bit of a geography teacher, mate. Uh, with the Euro Conference League final in Albania, the president is a Tim, and the final's on the 25th of May. Could this be our year? Well, there's a lot of things with that that's interesting, isn't it? Um, the Albanian president thing, apparently there's... I mean, I just take it at face value. I don't do politics much, guys, right? He seems sound to me. Eh? He just seems like he just loves the Celtic. I'm all for it. Um, what their human rights issues are. Who cares, man? Um, and the final, the 25th of May, though. Oh, can we get that far ahead of ourselves? By the way, I just wanted to ask a question to you all. Is it Bodo or Glint that we're playing? What's all this forward slash in the name all about? Honestly. Bodo stroke glimpse. Don't make your mind up. Who are you? Clive stroke bank. Get peace. Just make up who you are. But they're a team that gave Josie Mourinho his heaviest defeat of his full managerial career 6 1 this season. They then went to Roma and got a draw. People might say he's a fallen legend or whatever, but still 6 1. Wow. They're not to be taken lightly. Interestingly, though. With the Norwegian side, we've been very, very heavily linked with their midfielder, Patrick Baird, who's meant to be a bit of a baller. Hopefully, Ronnie Dyla maybe could help us with that. Double down, Boise. You know the score. Well, this is it, Kieran. And I don't like getting involved in this shit, mate. As I said, and I'm going to repeat what I said, because I'm very crystal clear on this stuff, Kieran. You're entitled to pull me up if you like, but I'll repeat what I said. I took him at face value. He loves the Celtic. That was my words. All right. War crimes in Albania. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Way off the menu for me. And I don't know enough about it to comment on that. What I did say was, I seen a president in a scarf. Face value. He loves the Celtic. I'll stand by that. But, albeit, by all means, pull me up all you like. I'm happy to try and defend myself. Or, if I get something wrong, I'll admit it. I'm not too proud. I'm not sure you, you know, a side to me that's too up his own ass that, you know, you, you don't entertain comments that maybe challenge me a bit. I like that. In fact, I need challenge. Alistair Bradford, Boise Stroke Bus. You know what I mean? That's it. That's exactly it. Well, well, Scotland the Brave, I don't want to... I do appreciate the photo. I know the reasons and that behind it. I'll be honest, there was a very small disagreement. There was a message sent, a show was pulled. He thought I was over the driving limit, put it that way. There was over 150 folk watching a 20-year-old game getting played. Everyone was fine. Um, he said it wasn't quite award-winning content. I replied saying, what, like your pishy wee videos about music and all that, they get 500 views. You know, the last one we did last week got 3,000, and that was it. I was removed. Um, but it wasn't publicly. That was a private chat. But he bought me, and then he removed me from the from the group chat thereafter. And then a week later, he unblocked me and sent me some message saying how seriously he takes anything I say as defamation or that. Fuck off. See all that? That's when you're like, mate, you're not the mafia. Like, get over yourself, you know? So I'll leave it at that, though. Because, as I say, he then, whoa, whoa, the one thing I will say as well, there was an end chat and then in tweet where he said, given the biggest platform, but instead tried to cause division and ends up in a career that it shouldn't have been for him. And it was clearly aimed at me. Everyone knew it was. And he got a backlash for it. And I found that funny because I had no, I, I was already blocked by then. So someone had to send me a screenshot of it. I thought, that's a bit odd. I mean, you know, you've made your move. That's sound, mate. Who cares? Grow up. But he does a silly aim tweet that he thinks is all clever and philosophical. He actually ended up looking like a bell end. And basically, the next day, he jumps on his other Twitter account, which is obviously the, the name of the podcast, 
and puts up a thank you message with a photo of me. I thought he's tied up in a bit of knots here. He's making a bit of a fool of himself. So from that point of view, ugh, you know, it didn't need to end like that. For me, if it was my full-time job and I was salaried doing it, I wouldn't have students who do it with part-time jobs and do it as a hobby with double my subscribers. If I was, you know, above him, I'd be asking serious questions as to how the fuck he's not the top dog by a country mile. Let the awards massage your ego all you want, but no one near the level he thinks he is. Anyway, that is it with all that shit, right? <laughs> uh, we will leave it there with, with all that stuff. And I, I think Paul's right. It's onwards and upwards. The Boise bus is flying right now. But of course, if people ask a question, I'm going to answer it. And the only reason was, I probably wouldn't have answered them as honestly as I have tonight had I not received that silly message saying, what, like, basically, in effect, watch what you're saying, we take it seriously. If I'd never received that, I'd have probably never entertained any of the questions. Anyway, what do we want to finish on tonight about the Celtic? Because I think there's a positive vibe right now with points like we got tonight. We go in to a League Cup final against the Hibs side, I think are there for the taking. I think they are there for the taking. I think we should be buzzing, in fact, to, to play them. And I'm really looking forward to that. And... I think we could be seeing Ange Postecoglou come Sunday lifting the first trophy of his reign, the first trophy available, you know? In fact, Ange Postecoglou might be the running for the Aston Villa job if he keeps this sort of, the, you know, the one from one. Uh, and that's what it's all about. Uh, onwards and upwards. Paul, I love the support, mate. Absolutely love it. And... Uh, <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't bother doing that, man. I didn't want any of that shit. Uh, getting a result with no strikes in 10 minutes is all brilliant. Fender Telly, that positive note is where I think we should leave leave tonight's show because I'm absolutely delighted uh, with how we've done. Absolutely delighted with it. And, I you know, you see 10 men. It's not just 10 men. It's a skeleton squad as well, Fender, isn't it? So we've done absolutely wonderfully well in so many different ways that I, I sometimes games that are three points are more than three points. That is so important, and it's going to be more important this season. In comes uh, Al Robson. We need a sniper. What's the score? I mean, if anyone's coming in with Snidey Potter, honestly, just give him a backhand or tell him to beat it. Who cares? Honestly, they're going to stop the bus. I just laugh at them, Alan. You know, is there a guy called RFC that's coming? I mean, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> For me, that's priceless. That's winning the war. If you're getting them joining in, I think that's glorious, to be honest. Um, uh, you know, the league title's going to go absolutely all the way. And I think we need to accept that I don't want side comments coming in, but if if Ranger supporters do come in, and Ranger supporters come in and they say, do you know what, we're going to beat you, or we're going to do this, and we've got reasonings behind it, I'll let another debate with them. I'll let them into the debate. I'm not one of those folks that think everything they think or say is completely irrelevant or unwarranted. I, I think there's 100% a huge obstacle in um, the opposition we've got to win this league this year. But I'm up for it. And I think the Celtic team showed tonight they were up for it. And on that note, we're going to leave. We will be back, though, Saturday night. The Double Dune show was a huge success. And my wee brother was the guest last week. Just easing myself into it. Although he's went down a storm, so you might see more of him in the future. Who knows? Um, but I've got Stephen Tomlinson on uh, this week from the Endless Silks podcast. Great guy. And he is all up for doing the Double Dune quiz. Uh, I'm going to make it particularly hard for him because they do a quiz every week on their show when they've got a guest. So I better make it doubly hard for him, eh? Double Dune on that one. Um, everyone, thank you again so much. We went over an hour. This was meant to be a half-hour show. In fact, I was meant to be playing a 20-year-old game tonight, but who cares? 236, guys. I want to say, and girls, I want to say goodnight to 
Thank you for jumping on the bus. We are not the news at 10. This is the Boise bus. It's always going to be a bumpy road. The road will be rocky, but it won't be rocky long. Thank you and a very good night to you all.